if you aim to contribute to broader scientific knowledge, formal research is often the right path. If your goal is to improve an internal workflow, then quality improvement may be sufficient. However, Hello and warm welcome to Medicinas Podcast, where we bring you insightful conversation with leading experts in medical field. Hi, I'm your host, Dr. Smarika Bhatt, and today we are thrilled to invite Dr. Maureen to our channel. Dr. Maureen is an experienced physician researcher who has successfully navigated this journey. Dr. Maureen currently works as a general practitioner, research mentor, and a research assistant on various projects in Indonesia. Her diverse experience makes her the perfect guest to discuss the topic. Welcome, Dr. Maureen, to the podcast interview. We are excited to have you here. Hello everyone. Hello Dr. Smarika. Thank you for inviting me on Med Synapse. I'm Dr. Maureen. I'm a medical doctor and researcher that passionate about bridging the gap between the clinical practice and impactful research. Also, I'm a co-founder of MedHub Academy, a research mentoring platform in Indonesia. I'm excited to share an insight on how a healthcare professional can transform everyday clinical observation into high-impact research questions, balance the research with clinical duties, and secure the funding of opportunities. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So, Dr. Maureen, uh, many clinicians notice patterns or problems in their practices that could lead to valuable research. How can healthcare professional transform everyday clinical observation? into high-impact research questions. So, the first, the clinical practice is a gold mine for research ideas and the key is to be observant and curious. Here's a simple approach. First, identify the patterns and anomalies. So, take notes of unusual cases, treatment responses, or frequent patient concerns, and then ask why and what if question. For example, if a particular treatment seems more effective in some patients, explore the possible reason. And then you can consult the literature, so check the existing research to see if similar patterns have been studied. If not, you may have identified a research gap that worth exploring and worth researching. That was such an incredible answer, Dr. Murray. So let's move on to the next question. What techniques help healthcare professionals balance demanding clinical duties with meaningful research activities? So, uh, balancing clinical work with research requires a strategic time management. Some practical techniques can include as first the set clear uh, priorities. So, allocate a specific time blocks for research, even if just one to two hours per week. So, it doesn't have to be all day. You can just spare a one to two hours per week or per day and then collaborate effectively. Partner with researchers, residents, or students who can help with data collection and analysis, and then use the digital tools you can use, such as a reference manager and then a databases and other programs that can help you to write your research. And then integrate the research into clinical practice. So turn case discussions, morbidity and mortality meetings or quality improvement initiative into research projects. You can also publish it as a site uh, case reports or a case series, etc. That answer was certainly helpful. Let's move on to the next question. When should medical practitioner pursue quality improvement versus formal research for their clinical questions? So, understanding the difference between quality improvement and formal research is very crucial. The quality improvement focuses on enhancing and assisting healthcare processes. It involves small, interactive changes and often use methods such as plan, do, study, and act, or PDSA. And then for the formal research, seeks to generate new clues that can be generalized beyond a single institution. If your goal is to improve an internal workflow, then quality improvement may be sufficient. However, 
If you aim to contribute to broader scientific knowledge, formal research is often the right path. That was a very well put together answer, Dr. Mary. For clinicians committed to developing research skills, what training options would you recommend? Which uh, research methodology training options work best for busy clinicians without requiring an additional uh, degree? Okay, uh, for the busy clinician, flexible training options include first online courses, a uh, lot of online courses such as Coursera and then um, Cochrane, and also from our uh, platform, uh, MedHub Academy can provide an excellent research methodology courses, and then workshop and short courses. A uh, university and research institu uh, institution often provide an intensive workshop with various topics. And then mentorship and collaboration. Uh, learning through a hands-on experience with seasoned researchers can be a valuable uh, experience. And then institutional uh, research support. Uh, many hospitals offer a uh, research mentorship program and statistical support. That's quite helpful, Dr. Mary. So let's move on to the last question. Funding is often a major roadblock. What funding strategies work for clinical researchers with limited publications or grant history? Okay, uh, securing the funding can be a challenging, but uh, these strategies might help. First, start small. Apply for seed grants, institutional funding, or small research awards to build a credibility. So, if you want to aim high, higher grant, you have to start small to build your credibility, your CV, so uh, the judges or the natural researchers uh, want to recruit you into the collaboration for their project with a bigger grant. And then collaborate with established researchers. So being part of a funded team, increase your exposure to grant writing process. And then leverage clinical trials and industry partnership such as uh, pharmaceutical and biotech companies often sponsor a clinician-led studies and then explore a non-traditional funding such as a crowdfunding, foundation, philanthropic grants are viable options and last but not least, the develop a strong research proposal a well-written proposal with clear objectives and solid methodologies significantly increase the funding chances Thank you so much Dr. Marine for sharing your valuable answers I'm sure our viewers will truly enjoy the answers Thank you for watching, thank you Dr. Smarika for inviting me uh, in MedSynap So I hope we have another collaboration in the next video or next occasion Thank you lot everyone And thank you to our viewers for tuning in And remember if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions Do not hesitate us to join on MedSynap's platform MedSynap's platform is not just a resource, it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers, participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay tuned, take care.